things we said to ourselves very early in this film is that this was not going to be a film about little tiny creatures. This was going to be a film about a huge world. Ants is a film about one ant in a colony of millions. We brought together directors Eric Darnell and Tim Johnson to explain the detailed process of the making of ants. We're going to take a look at how do, uh, how do we make an animated film and where does it start and how does it uh, go about finding its way to final animation. Here, in fact, is where it starts, as storyboard drawings. Sometimes primitive, very simple, sometimes very elaborate, but always about content. It's essentially like a comic book filmed in the timing and order of the actual sequence. Yeah, Randy Cartwright was our head of story, and uh, he worked with anywhere from two other to, to 15 other story artists, depending upon where we are in the production, to lay these storyboards out for the film. <laughs> We actually have Woody Allen and Sharon Stone's voice here, but when a storyboard begins its life, it's often recorded with temporary talent, including Eric and myself and the producers and other artists and animators who lend a hand by lending their voice. And we use that as the very starting point to start cutting together images of the film. And as you'll see as we go through the process here, um, a great deal of the, of the look of the final images are derived from, from the layout and the, and the design and composition and the storyboards. And the more of that that we can come up with at this phase, of course, the more effective we can be down the line when production costs really crank up. You can even see a lot of the acting is starting to happen in the drawings on screen. Yeah, it almost has to, in fact, so we're sure we're heading in the right direction. Now, this rather frightening looking uh, series of images is uh, layout. Uh, Simon Smith, our head of layout, will work with the directors, uh, Eric and myself, work with storyboard artists, and start to realize these drawings in the three-dimensional world of the computer. And this is the equivalent on the computer of what a stick figure is in a drawing. Primitive, but it explains the basics of what we're doing. So it's critical that we, that we of course, get the space laid out. It is a, sort of a virtual three-dimensional space, and we have to make sure that our camera is in the right place, our characters are going to be framed correctly once they uh, go into final animation. And we have to give those animators doing the final animation the camera angle that their character is going to finally be seen from because they need to animate to the camera. They have to play to the camera's point of view. You can see, by the way, that we didn't have the dance cycle done yet. Oh, that's right. So what did we have? The drinking cycle. It's an aphid fest going on here. <laughs> But it worked in the sense that we saw sort of the density of the crowd. And it gave us our cinematography, our first look at composition. Animation really only works with camera, even though the layout artists work to give us a, a sense of some of the action. The animators will strip that away and start from scratch. <laughs> for the film. This is like a, you know, a quick rendered version or the, the images are calculated very quickly on the computer with all the detail and deformation and animation in the model but without all of the lighting that, that adds a whole another level of complexity to the generation of the images. You can see the dancers in back of Zianbala are at low resolution simply because we, we don't need the information and we don't ask the computer to deal with the extra information at this point. Rex Grignon and, and Raman Hoy were the supervising animators on Ants and just did an incredible job uh, managing, if you will, these, these characters and, and make, making sure that we sort of maintain integrity in the way that Z performs. Uh, you know, we have 24 animators working on the film and, and, and all of those animators will animate all the different characters in the movie. And that was only at the end. I think we started with 15, 16, and grew right. to that level of 24 by the end of the production. So part of what Rex and Rama did, besides, of course, doing uh, animation and sort of setting the standard for the animation in the film, was to make sure that we maintained this level of continuity with the characters as we as we passed a shot from one animator to another or, or gave you know different animators shots with the same character in it. We worked with a choreographer, by the way, on the dance, and then uh, story artists as well as animators refined that choreography. But it sure comes alive with lighting, and I think this transition shows that lighting in the computer doesn't mean simply shining a light on a surface. It also means how the surface reacts to light. Does it look like stone or dirt or skin? All of these things called textures are painted, and then they're wrapped kind of like a rubber wallpaper around the surfaces of the characters to create the complex 
patterns of light and shadow that appear on the characters. Great lighting supervisors, a team of about 30 people were headed up by Janet Rentel, Jean Cunningham, Paul Wang, and Craig Ring. The four of them working with this talented group of people of every background from very technical to very artistic painters and programmers all help cooperate to produce the beautifully lit images of the film. And again, it's often the little things that are done uh, in lighting as with every other uh, specialty that really make these images sing. You know, the, the highlights in the eyes of the characters, the way that the, the sheen on their bodies is, is just so. We did a little special effects work in this as well with um, making uh, the lighting look a little like do cheesecloth, you know, a little Vaseline on the lens, a little glowiness to things. All of those special effects add to the filmic lighting to create a little magic moment for Zian Bala. <laughs> This is great just to see all four versions play at once and you could see uh, looking at the upper left and lower right how similar many things are and also see where decisions were made in the process to to change things based on discoveries we made in layout or, or even motion the uh, process is uh, a lot of people a lot of time we may go through storyboarding a sequence many times and it may be six months of storyboarding going through several different story artists trying things out before it goes through layout Layout has a couple weeks where four people or so work on it to perfect it. And then we go to motion. A sequence like this can take a team uh, of our animators, uh, perhaps about eight of them working on this sequence. They might work on the sequence for another eight weeks or so before it's handed to lighting. And they, again, may work with a team of, oh, about eight people or so taking another eight weeks to complete it. Any given scene of the 36 scenes in our movie may actually take upwards of uh, almost a year to actually go through the entire pathway of production. So you can imagine how many shots are actually in production at one time. It's, it's quite a, a job to manage all of that and, and make sure that everybody gets the feedback they need to keep moving forward. It's true, we sing the praises of all of our artists, but the production management, actually guiding this stuff through production is terrific. Aaron Mortar, Brad Lewis, Patty Whitten were the heads of that whole production management as the producers of the film, and they really uh, created a team that could efficiently generate all of this creative output. So this is the section of the sequence, of course, where the drop of water comes down, and Trap Z. Another look at uh, how the story is really told so effectively with some very simple drawings before you get all of the elaborateness of computer animation and before you get a hundred people involved, you can really make an impact as a story artist on the film. You certainly learn a lot by seeing the whole film this way before you take it into production. You, in particular, um, a sequence like this one, which is so difficult to do water in computers, um, our effects department, uh, Ken Bielenberg and Philippe Glickman in particular, uh, as heads of the department, they, they look at the storyboard and they start to see the problems facing them as uh, effects animators, and they begin to work with programmers and design uh, all of the different technical ways in which they're going to pull off the sequence. At this stage, the modeling department starts supplying final models for things, too, so that we can lock down camera angles and what have you. So Conrad Dutton lead, leads a team that uh, is working furiously to, to make sure that we have the uh, high-resolution models that we need to, to tell the story. You can see a lot of the very early work of the effects department. And I think I mentioned actually in the, the commentary during the film how we altered the height of that water drop. You can see the pre-altered height and how really very short distance they fall. Here's the water drops that have been added. The effects department. The full effects. Work, uh, effects worked on this. The geodesic dome. Yes. It looks like he's trying to escape from Epcot Center, which if you've been there, maybe you've experienced too. He's trapped in Buckminster Fullerene. <laughs> <laughs> Great interaction between Bala and the stuff the effects guys did with that sphere. And there we have again the uh, long drop this time. Compare that to what we saw in the layout and you'll see how uh, dramatically uh, stronger that uh, feeling is when we increase the height. I think we ended up losing a lot of the water drops on the characters when we took them into lighting uh, because it was just distracting. distracting yeah. So you certainly learn things when you take it to this very final stage and often are making um, a number of adjustments. 
Lighting, beautiful. lighting, yeah, just extraordinary. The the water, all the refractions, and all of the strange uh, effects that water has on light. <laughs> a little bit of water on the ground, but you know, we really just felt it was too distracting to make a big deal out of it. Help! Help me, Bob! 